thank you and good morning to all of you. We had a very interesting session with, uh, with Shivnath. And, uh, and at the risk of uh, actually being pronounced as blasphemous in a social media conference, let me say that I believe that the answer to this question that you see here is no. And, which is the, and this is the reason why I believe that. If you look at it today, it's, you know, you know th one is there's a huge amount of hype which is there on social media. There's a huge amount of hype on how social media is actually today influencing just about everything. To the extent that the Tahari, whatever happened in Tahari Square, actually was branded as Twitter revolution. But if Tahari Square was Twitter revolution, then 1857 was the Chapati revolt, if you know what Chapati did in 1857. Uh, now this is where, how I believe the whole flow happens. I do not also think that there is one medium which can actually say that they are the most, the biggest arbiter of reputation today. The way it happens today is that it could start from a Twitter, go on to television, will move on to a newspaper, go to the parliament, come back to Twitter again, it's a free flow. The way it happens altogether is a free flow of information and, to and today everything influences everything else. Nobody can say that television influences agenda. Today, every medium can influence agenda and every medium has influenced agenda. And every medium feeds off the other. Every medium today has benefited from the other. For example, Twitter, with its 12 million followers in its four years of existence, has a disproportionate amount of media coverage. And it is only because of the disproportionate amount of media coverage that Twitter is where it is today. Contrast the, four, contrast the four years and 12 million in India of Twitter with the, the two newest telecom operators in India. Two years of existence, MTS has 15 million customers. Uninor has thrice that number. It has 40 million customers in two months. But if you look at Twitter today, huge amount of coverage, good thing. But the fact of the matter is today is that it could, it could start and end from anywhere. It could start with cattle class on Twitter and end up a minister's resignation, but it could similarly start in a caravan magazine, go on to Twitter, and so on and so forth. The so fact of the matter is a free flow which is happening today right now. And do not also forget the most important medium of all today, which is human interaction, which is face-to-face -face interaction. It continues, to, it is the oldest and continues to be the most powerful medium as of today. Therefore, a social media would need an SXSW, it would also need a India, uh, India social. And therefore, you know, the, 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 the book world might have moved on to a Kindle and a Nook and an iPad, it still needs a Jaipur Literary Festival. Similarly, you also need a TED and a TEDx. Now, if, you, if I'm talking about these events which are happening, mass events, they are actually human interaction today, they are probably the most powerful medium, more than anything else. But the fact of the matter is today, everything is fluid. It moves from one medium to another. So today, that's the first thing I'm, that's the first proposition that I have. Second one is, it is not just Arnab Goswami alone. Today, everybody, including me, including the panel here, as well as Shivnath and everybody, each one of you has a position today. And the problem with taking a position is that, ultimately, the complexities of any situation the complexity of any, any environment today is lost out. You know, reality is not as easy, is not something as black and white. It is not something which, is, which, you, which you simply say is, you know, it is here or there. Unfortunately, on a lot of the things that we say, either in the social media, otherwise you tend to take a position, tend to simplify things. For example, Kushan talked about the Norway child custody case. Not a simple case, it's nuanced. Reality is more nuanced, reality is more complex, and reality is more layered than what we think it is. Uh, since my gentleman, uh, since the gentleman before me, Shivnath, has taken the Vedanta case, I'll take the SR case as well. Take two cases of SR. The Thattisgarh bribery case, or take the 2G case. You think it's simple? No, it is not. And Shivnath will agree with me when I say, all cases, including those two cases that I referred to, are nuanced, they are layered, and it's not as simple as they seem to be. They're very, very complex. Today, you seem to pass a judgment on each and every, on each and every case, and, and that's a reality of life. Everybody passes a judgment, everybody takes a position. Third thing is that today, 
Okay. Orchestrated campaigns are actually driving agenda. You know, uh, there is school children, and this is a report I read in Sunday Times of India last week. There are school children in Lucknow, Kanpur, and other places who actually have set up Facebook groups and huge campaigns to capture Kony, Joseph Kony, to capture, bring back Joseph Kony to justice. If you look at Facebook, you'll not find a single group, not a single group, which talks about getting Daud Ibrahim or Hafiz side to justice. Not a single group. What is really happening? It is really an orchestrated agenda which is driving people. If you look at, and, and the agenda could be driven by anywhere. The agenda could be driven by, by, uh, by corporates. Agenda could be driven by a group of individuals. Agenda could be driven by an NGO. Agenda could be driven by activists. Uh, there was this, you know, uh, Twitter trend that happened in January which called I Feel Up. And a lot of people fell for it where they started giving feel good mes messages. But at the end of it all, they discovered that I Feel Up was actually a product of 7up. Another reality of life. Okay. Now, the campaigns are orchestrated. They are very sophisticated to the extent that even a very well-read Shivnath actually would start believing, despite having covered this topic for many years as a journalist and as, as, uh, as, an, as an editor and as somebody who has actually you know, watched this very closely, would still believe, and I'm sure many of you still believe, that Vedanta mines in Yamgiri. Nothing can be closer from the truth. Nothing could be farther from the truth. There is no... It's not a Freudian slip. And, uh, and I'd like to take Shivnath to Niamgiri. And I've been to Niamgiri myself. And I'll take Shivnath to Niamgiri. And uh, so there are absolutely no mines in... Uh, there are no mines in Orissa. We have an alumina refinery. And we have an aluminium plant. But the bauxite for the alumina actually comes from Chhattisgarh and from Gujarat. And that's a fact of life. But... There has been an orchestrated campaign, there has been a very sophisticated campaign as a result of which people actually start believing what is actually not the truth. The other one is that, you know, as far as, you know, uh, Shivna talked about the board meeting of Goldman Sachs happening in India at the backdrop of the, you know, the letter scandal that happens. For people who have been part of corporates and no board meetings, board meetings do not happen in one month's notice. Board meetings are decided way, way in advance sometimes one year in advance. So I'm sure that this was not a fallout of, of the board meeting that took place, of the letter that took place, and therefore the board meeting happened in India. But, uh, but this is what people take positions, you know, campaigns are driving agendas. Uh, this is a slide where actually I, you know, which I share with Shivnath, which is that everybody is under a microscope, everybody is under scrutiny, the media, corporations, individuals, the bigger you are, the more name you have, people will actually look at it. And there will always be somebody who will not be happy with you. For example, the Obama hate page on Facebook has 8 lakh people who are liking it. This is, this is really a fact today. Now, keeping this reality in mind, what exactly is the future of reputation? I would say the future of reputation is not very different from what used to happen before. The essential building blocks of good reputation will remain the same. So therefore, a company must have good products, it must have good practices, it must practice, it must follow, you know, ethical code of conduct, it must be socially responsible, it must listen to customers, it must listen to other stakeholders, and it must respond to them. I think these are the hallmarks that will remain for everybody. These hallmarks will never change. The essence of reputation will be the same whether it's happening right now or whether it's happening before. The other one that, that, are, that, that I think is going to happen is happening right now is that, you know, currently you have this standalone campaign. So you have an advertising campaign which is standalone. There's a PR campaign and there's a social media campaign. They all primarily tend to be, you know, standalone campaigns. I'll give you examples of two campaigns which have actually happened in the last... One has happened in the last six months, the other has happened in the last one year, which you actually you cannot classify them as, as a classical campaign in any one of these sense of the term. The boundaries of these, of whatever you say is advertising, PR, social media, etc., right, encompasses everything. The other campaign that I'll take example of is something which is, uh, which is the best job in the world of, of Queensland tourism. 
Again, that's a campaign that transcended everything. They use advertising, they use events, they use internet, Facebook, YouTube, video, just about everything. I think tomorrow's campaign is going to be like that. It's going to be one campaign. You know, the distinction between this is a social media campaign, this is a PR campaign is actually going to disappear. And, um, and all of us, and this campaign could actually be driven by a social media agency, it could be driven by a PR agency, it could be driven by an advertising agency, it could be driven by just about anybody. So that's what I see as the future of, future of campaigns. The last slide that I have is that all campaigns need to be transparent, there needs to be open and transparent. It needs to engage with the audience, involve the stakeholders, and more importantly, it needs to evolve over a period of time. You know, the, you, know you cannot say that, okay, I am doing a campaign, and this is the favorite campaign of lazy marketers, which is to actually offer a prize which could range from an from a iPad to a, to a Jetta. And uh, so that kind of campaigns will go away. It will evolve, campaigns will change midway, but it will evolve based on stakeholder feedback. So that's my two bit on, on future reputation. And I think we'll go for a discussion after that. Oh, we'll go to the next speaker. Thank you. Yeah, we'll go to the next speaker. Thanks, Sanjim. Thank you so much.